In a sense, the upper floor, um, it, the upper floor is a history of museums. And um, there are small changes that happen all the time. Different films are shown in the, in the activist club. Uh, there are changes in, in, uh, in the, the um, room, for instance, where the Museum of American Art Berlin, we've invited a writer to make a reinterpretation of that whole story. So there'll be two levels of interpretation, one of which you can listen to on headphones or read in text, and the other one which you can experience in the room itself. So um, I think that there's always a, there's always a, a balance to be struck between, um, in a sense, establishing that a museum can tell the history of museums and that that's, that, that, that's as valid as telling the history of art, telling the history of, of your own kind of institution. And I see what it produces is these amazing experiences, I think, of seeing the, the Raum der Gegenwart, the Room of the Contemporary, by Maholi Noj, basically for the first time. It was planned to be built in the 1930s, but never built. And now we have it. So you can experience something from the past, which was meant to refer to, to the contemporary moment at that, at that time. So it's still the room of the contemporary, even though it's a reconstruction from something from the 1930s. This extraordinary shift in times that happened. Or you look at the Museum of, uh, of American Art and this project to bring together the Vatican and the Museum of American Art in New York. This extraordinary combination of, of two moments where, where history um, was defined in a sense, where, where, where antiquity was created um, and then when mo modernism was, was confirmed. Um, and these two very important aspects of our, of our experience, um, our idea that we have a long history, which go, which, that time, when antiquity is created, time goes from a circle to an arrow and starts to flow forward, but also flow backwards at the same time, it becomes linear rather than cyclical. And modernism, which creates almost everything that we understand about what's good in the world today. But also we have to understand this is, is, is a product of industrialization, of, of, of mass consumption, and of all the things that we're also struggling with today to understand the consequences of those for our, us as human beings. Um, so these two moments are present in the museum. In a sense, they need to stay in the museum for a long time. I also feel that some of the best museums in the world, like the Sir John Soane Museum in, in, uh, in London, are museums that haven't changed for 300 years. That actually you, you, you go back and you see more and more in the same, rather than constantly expecting the new. And that also feels a counter to this, idea, this constant demand for innovation that comes from the commercial and capitalist field. Um, that actually if we keep things the same, but we slightly alter them, but we also ask people to come back and look again, and to get used to what we're doing, because showing a, muse a history of museums is quite a different step from the expectations that you might have of a museum. Um, then to get used to that and to start to enjoy it and start to find surprises in it and start to find new aspects to it needs time. We need time as, as, uh, as human beings, I think. We don't, we don't always have to consume everything at the rate of five minutes.